Okay, so in this video, we are going to show some techniques um, of finding velocities um, in the context of uh, dynamics, uh, uh, particle dynamics, and um, rigid body uh, dynamics. Um, we will emphasize on uh, velocities of uh, of points or velocities of particles um, that are uh, part of a rigid body or which are uh, moving, um, you know, relative to a rigid body, um, and uh, we are going to show um, a few techniques, some of the standard techniques that are used uh, for finding uh, these velocities given a problem. And uh, the reason why um, uh, I think these it, it's it's good to have an idea of uh, what the general techniques are uh, is that velocities are obviously very common um, and important quantities in any kinematic analysis. Of particles or rigid bodies, um, they are um, used for finding, for instance, um, kinetic energies of of a system of particles or a system of rigid bodies, and um, ultimately they can they play an integral part, uh, you know, in finding the equations of motion. Uh, they are also useful for finding um, um, or 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 formulating a linear or angular momentum. And um, and thereby they are instrumental in helping us in um, formulating uh, impulse momentum equations, either in the linear cases or in the angular uh, rotational cases. That is angular momentum. So um, finding velocities and knowing how how to find uh, velocities in um, in in dynamical uh, systems. Um, is uh, very important and the goal of uh, this video is to um, show you some of the techniques and um, this video may not be um, may not have all the information so um, you know there may be um, supplementary videos on this um, or extra videos on this that will cover uh, more material but let's get started and um, let's say that um, the goal is uh, here is uh, techniques um, techniques for finding um, velocities um, of points slash particles. Um, with uh, an emphasis on rigid bodies. Okay. So, um, let us consider um, the motion of a cylindrical disc. Okay. Um, let's say that the disk is of radius capital R and it is uh, moving on a horizontal surface and um, let's say that the vertical through um, its center at an arbitrary instant is shown here and um, there is there is a point P um, whose velocity we are interested in in finding and that point P is making an angle theta okay um, and the and the disks angular velocity is let's say it is some Omega okay and uh, since this theta is being measured from the vertical which is a fixed direction um, omega is going to be nothing but theta dot so theta dot is going to actually represent omega why that's the case well that's the case because we are finding uh, or theta uh, rather represents the orientation of p with respect to C, okay, um, 
with reference to a fixed direction and that fixed direction is this vertical direction okay since it is giving you the angular the orientation of p with respect to c in within a um, or in the context of a fixed reference direction this angle theta is the actual angular orientation of the rigid body and so theta dot is going to be the angular velocity uh, of the rigid body so at a particular instant this disk has an angular velocity of omega and obviously it is um, moving in this direction in the horizontal direction um, we are not going to make any assumptions whether the rigid body is um, is rolling without slipping or or slipping we are not going to uh, make any assumptions uh, we are going to say that let's say that that this horizontal direction is capital X denoted by capital X and the vertical direction is denoted by capital Y and um, we set a fixed reference frame um, at a certain point let's call that point O and if the horizontal direction is X and vertically upward direction is Y then you can see that a right-handed coordinate system will have capital Z as the direction going out of the page of the paper so when I put a circle with a point then it denotes a direction that is coming out from the surface of the page if I put a circle with a uh, with cross then it's a direction that is going perpendicularly inwards from the surface of the page so this is our um, um, capital X capital Y capital Z fixed reference frame and uh, the question that we ask is um, uh, what is the velocity of the point P so what is the velocity of P at an arbitrary instant okay so this is the question that we ask and um, let's see so this is the um, given uh, problem and um, we should be able to now um, formulate the position uh, and the velocity and so on and so forth okay so we also um, um, denote um, the instantaneous position of the bottom of the disk uh, with respect to O by the variable small x so let's say that this point of contact the instantaneous point of contact of the disk with the ground is at a horizontal distance of x um, from the fixed um, fixed point O where the fixed reference frame has its origin um, so the first approach that we are going to so first approach in general can be considered as the approach where you um, find the position and then the derivative of the position gives you the velocity so um, so determine position of this point of the point of interest and differentiate it to determine the velocity which you know as as the approach sounds is a very fundamental approach because after all velocities are just time derivatives of position so this is the most fundamental approach that we can use to find the velocities of a point of interest um, let me just uh, put one qualifier here um, I forgot to mention that um, the point P was uh, the distance of the point P from the from the center needs to be provided so let's say that the distance is small d otherwise the location of the point P is not um, clearly defined okay 
so if if this is the um, if this is the approach that we are going to take so let us first um, try to formulate the position um, of this point so the position of this point so position vector of the point so position vector of P and um, we will find the position vector with, with respect to the point O as, as you know if you want to find the velocity of a particular point you need to represent, uh, represent its position with respect to a fixed point and then differentiate it because if the point itself is moving then its velocity should be also uh, under consideration so position vector of P with respect to O which is a fixed point is first um, is something that we are going to um, um, is something that we are going to formulate first so we say the following we say that the x position that is the x coordinate of the point P is given by x plus um, d sine theta right and this you can find uh, by um, so let us so let us just redraw this disk here okay so this is C this is the point P okay and it is making an angle theta so and it, this distance is d so if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta right if this angle is theta then this distance is d sine theta and this vertical distance is d cosine theta right so the position of the point P then is if you go back to the original diagram is X plus this horizontal distance which is this horizontal distance so X plus D sine theta and then YP is um, based on the diagrams it's R plus D cosine theta note that Y of P is the vertical distance of the point P from the x-axis along the y direction and that is going to be the distance r plus this distance due to the fact that the point P is making an angle and that distance that vertical distance is given by d cosine theta in this figure right so the position vector then let's call it RP is given by x plus d sine theta i plus r plus d cosine theta j right so that's the that's the position vector and um, and then the velocity the velocity of p is going to be the derivative of this position vector so if I differentiate this what I get is x dot plus d is a d is a constant parameter because the um, the point P is located um, at a certain distance d from the center and that distance is not changing okay so d is a constant parameter so it doesn't get differentiated theta however is changing so d theta dot cosine theta i plus now r is also a parameter that's not changing it's the radius of the uh, of the disk so um, d is obviously not changing so negative um, negative d uh, okay so we have uh, x dot plus d theta dot cosine theta i plus um, and then within brackets we have negative d sine theta theta dot j okay so that's 
the velocity let me just write the rewrite the velocity so that it is properly arranged x dot plus d theta dot cosine theta i uh, minus d theta dot sine theta j so that's the velocity of the point p um, now uh, one thing that we can um, uh, <coughs> notice over here is that if we split this and write this velocity as x dot i plus um, d theta dot times cosine theta i minus sine theta um, j then um, this part represents the velocity of c which is the center okay so this part represents the velocity of c and uh, let me just so that we have the diagram in our view let me just show the ground here and our x y coordinate frame as well um, and the fact that the point that is touching the ground is at a distance of x so note that because it's a, this is a disk the velocity of the um, uh, velocity of the point c is also x dot because c is always going to remain at the distance x um, um, uh, from the uh, from the origin o so this represents the velocity of c and then this represents the velocity of p with respect to c okay so this represents the velocity of p with respect to c um, how this is the velocity of p with respect to c um, that we can um, that we can uh, very easily show so let me go to the next page um, so if you consider If you consider the disk, then um, and the point P, uh, making an angle theta with the vertical, right? This is the point C. Then the motion of the point P consists of two motion. Two motions one is just the translation of the disk if the disk was not rotating but just translating then what would have been the velocity of the point C well our velocity of the point P the velocity of the point P would have been same as the velocity of the point C so in other words if the disk was not spinning it was just moving forward Um, then the velocity of the point P would have been same as the velocity of the point C. Okay, so you can say that one component of the velocity of the point P comes from the velocity of the point C. The other component comes from the fact that the point P is with relative or with respect to the point C, the point P is just spinning right so <clears throat> with respect to c the point p is just spinning so with respect to c then the point p has got a velocity that is perpendicular to cp okay and that velocity is given by theta dot times d okay angular velocity times the perpendicular um or the velocity rather is due to a rotation is the angular velocity times the perpendicular um, uh, it's perpendicular to the point from C to P so that's where the uh, that's how the velocity um, uh, gets generated so if we now form the uh, the parallelogram of vectors 
then the net velocity of p at this instant is given by this vector which is the sum of vc and theta dot d and by the way this theta dot d is nothing but the velocity of p with respect to c okay um, so this is how the velocity of p um, um, transpires from the individual components and vp is there, therefore the velocity of c plus the velocity of p with respect to c and this is a very fundamental um, equation or a very fundamental expression which relates the velocities between any two points um, you could now differentiate uh, this and say that then the acceleration of p is equal to acceleration of c plus the acceleration of p with respect to c which is true because if i take this very fundamental relative velocity expression and if i just differentiate it um, that should work because it, this is true at all times and so we get the acceleration and in fact um, you can also um, integrate this and um, you don't need to integrate the you can say that the position of p is also equal to the position of c plus the position of p with respect to c actually this is the starting point this is the fundamental relation um, of a relative position um, or, or a position of one point with respect to another um, in kinematics or uh, in, uh, in di dynamics in general. So we can start from here, differentiate once, you get the velocity of the point P with respect to C. Differentiate twice, you get the acceleration of P with respect to um, when expressed in terms of C. And so this is a very fundamental starting point um, of any kinematic expression. Um, so uh, now um, let us write the expression for the velocity of p that we just found out so the velocity of p is equal to um, uh, our expression was um, x dot plus d theta dot cosine theta i um, plus negative d sine theta theta dot j I keep writing the theta dot after sine theta which is okay technically there is no mistake here but um, maybe an organized way of writing it would be x dot plus d theta dot cosine theta i plus negative d theta dot sine theta j okay so that's the velocity of the point p now um, let us um, ask the question well what is then the velocity of the point p when theta is, is equal to let's say 30 degrees so what is vp when theta is equal to 30 degrees and the answer to that is quite simple now because you can now just plug in 30 degrees here and say that VP when theta equals 30 degrees is given by um, X dot plus D theta dot and cosine 30 is square root 3 by 2 minus D theta dot and sine 30 is half so minus D theta dot divided by 2 J so that's the velocity of the point P um, when um, the angle theta um, is 30 degrees. Now let us make a small um, change in this and let's say that, not a change, but let's just say that we want to find the position instead of doing the substitution here. Why don't we find the velocity directly from the position itself? So we ask the question, what is the position the position vector when theta is equal to 30 degrees what is the position vector and well the position vector uh, if we go back to our previous page uh, where we initially found out the position vector the position vector was 
rp is equal to x plus d sine theta i uh, plus r plus d cosine theta j this was our position vector so with this position vector and you can verify that over here indeed the position is x plus d sine theta uh, in the i direction and r plus d cosine theta in the j direction now what is the position at theta equals 30 degrees it is x plus d over 2i plus r plus square root 3d over 2j right so that's the position vector now uh, what if we take this approach um, that the velocity I'll find the velocity of the point P by differentiating this position therefore VP um, at theta equals 30 degrees is equal to um, x dot because everything else is a constant d is a constant r is a constant um, and d in the second term is also a constant so what is happening over here we are getting an incorrect velocity question is how why why is it that we get an incorrect velocity when we took the same approach so let me put a let me demarcate this here so up to this point we found the velocity we found the velocity for a special case where theta equals 30 degrees all that is good and um, then we ask the question uh, can we find the velocity of this point by um, you know finding the position vector when theta equals 30 degrees okay and then differentiating it and if we do that this is the position vector at theta equals 30 degrees and if we differentiate it this is what we get and the velocity is incorrect why is that the case so does it mean that differentiating the position to get the velocity doesn't always work so the answer to that is that um, this did not work because because um, we did not consider a general form, a generalized form or a general configuration for expressing the position and determining the velocity so in this case this particular exercise did not work because we took this form and we differentiated it now this form is is not the the general configuration this is not the general uh, position vector of the particle and and so because it's not the general position vector of the particle it already has in it embedded a fixed position a fixed angle okay it has the general position x but it has a fixed angle in it because this whole expression is not completely a general expression so when we differentiate it the answer that we get is also not a general velocity and it gives us an incorrect answer and because we don't get a general velocity it gives us a skewed answer um, and and we we get an incorrect velocity expression what we need to do when we use a position vector to find velocities of a point on a rigid body or or the velocity of a particle what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have we express the position of the particle in its most general form right that is um, express the configuration the location of the particle with all the variables that you need to define the position of the particle so express the position of the particle using all the variables that you need to express the position of the variable don't 
assume any of the variables to take a fixed number right rather what you do is take the general form to find the position differentiate it okay and then once you have differentiated and found the velocity then substitute the specific condition at the end that way your position is general your velocity is general and then you can impose the specific condition the specific angle or the specific position where you want to find the velocity and the same applies for acceleration as well if we were to find out acceleration of this particle at any given um, orientation or a given point what we what we would do is we would go back to our um, uh, most general position expression differentiate it to get the velocity differentiate again to get the acceleration and only then substitute the uh, specific um, position or the specific angle at which you are uh, you want to find the acceleration so that is one caveat that is one thing that we need to be careful about when we find velocities by taking the derivatives of the position vector okay the method for finding velocities by taking the derivative of the position vector is an absolutely correct method no question about that you need to do two things one is express the position of the uh, point um, the absolute position of the point okay that is with respect to a fixed point a fixed reference point so express the position with respect to a fixed point number one and number two is when you um, are interested in finding the uh, position or velocity at a particular um, instant then take the most general position differentiate it and then at the end make the substitution of those specific positions or orientations okay so um, so if we did that then we would get this expression which was which is the correct expression for the velocity of p at 30 degrees and we would not have gotten this incorrect expression okay so that brings us to the um, end of this um, video um, here we have gone over how to find velocities um, using the direct differentiation approach okay so this is the direct differentiation approach um, let me just um, let me just point that out here so this is um, the determine the position uh, uh, of the point of interest and differentiate so I would say this is the direct differentiation approach all right so direct differentiation approach um, in the next um, video we will um, talk about how to find these uh, positions or rather these velocities um, by using um, the principles of relative velocities so we will talk about how you can directly use the idea of relative velocities so for example over here we have said that the velocity of p is equal to velocity of c plus velocity of p with respect to c you can directly use this to find the velocity of p okay and so that is that is um, the approach that we will talk about in the uh, next video so we will um, stop here. Thank you so much.